Emergency! Emergency broadcast! Well, podcast, not necessarily a broadcast. I don't think I'm allowed to say that. It is the uh, BWI Daily Edition Emergency Breaking News Podcast. There is so much going on. How about an info dump for a Sunday evening during the uh, NFL first weekend of Super Wild Card Weekend? Uh, so, Nate, we've got a lot of stuff to get through. Let's get to the breaking news and work backwards. So just a few minutes ago, tell us what happened. The Bills won. <laughs> Barely. Let's not talk right. about that. <laughs> no, not that. Uh, yeah. So, well, a few things, two things happened. I think that were certainly significant to Penn State football. One is uh, Transfer Portal picked up Dante Cephas. Penn State did from Kent State. A guy who, you know, let's be honest here, uh, just given what happened with Devin Carter, there are things that still have to happen. Right? Like a, a commitment is, uh, I know I'm not casting doubt on this at all. I'm just saying uh, he, he uh, committed to Penn State. And so that sets the table for him uh, to arrive at a later date. Right. I, I don't think right. that it's this is a an immediate thing for Penn State, but. Uh, certainly long story, long term, this is a guy who Penn State had been seeking very actively, very clearly uh, made his announcement for, for Penn State. Um, so hu- huge news, really, just yeah. given, given the state of the room. The they, they got a receiver. They, they, they got a receiver and not just a receiver, maybe not their top target overall. I think some other guys, maybe when you, you factor in uh, talent level and years left. Uh, maybe yep. it would have been higher, but Dante Cephas was very much, if it wasn't one, it was one a from all yeah, the yeah. things I've seen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, j- just given what was available currently in the portal uh, and, and I think even beyond that context, like this was the guy, this has been the guy for quite a while for Penn state. And so there it is, right. It, yeah. it happened. Uh, they, they got the guy and now they can move forward. Yeah. So the other side of the coin this evening, um, is that Taylor Stubblefield is not his coach. Yeah. Taylor Stubblefield relieved of his duties at Penn State. It did not happen in the typical Penn State fashion, though, Nate. So take us through what happened uh, today with this situation. Yeah, so <sighs> there there had been some, uh, I'm going to call them smoke signals, but just some vague stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, we're all, we're reporters and we hear things and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, credit where it's due. Sean Fitz uh, of our staff heard some things and we all started to kind of follow up on it. And I, I wouldn't say that we felt as though it was necessarily a certainty, but it was something that, um, you know, certainly looked like it was uh, very much a possibility. And then mm-hmm. uh, so we prepared for it. Uh, for that possibility. And then Taylor Stubblefield himself tweeted uh, kind of a lengthy statement, honestly, yes. uh, you know, voicing his praise and thankfulness, gratefulness to the receivers who had been under his tutelage at Penn state. He's, he's mm-hmm. been at Penn state for three seasons. And so he, he gave a lot of um, a lot of platitudes to those guys. And, you know, it was kind of a, <laughs> Can I, can I read some, can I read some sections because I have at it. Yeah, do it. It it was to me, this was fascinating. Um, Okay. So proud of the contributions from the wide receivers have made to this team and honored to develop a first round draft pick at this institution for the first time since 2003. Thrilled the Penn State receivers now hold records for the longest reception in Rose Bowl history. Humbled to have been part of the highest ranking recruiting class in Penn State history, including five wide receivers. Um, I lost my spot because I keep trying to make a point. Uh, history, uh, the history of Penn State, including five wide receivers, proud of the kids who are uh, etch their etch their names in the Penn State record book. Two in the top fifteen for receiving yards, two in the top ten for receptions, and finally, uh, later been part of a team that went eleven and two, culminating in a Rose Bowl victory. That sounds a lot like uh, defending my resume as to the decision here, does it not? I think that it very much does, uh, and certainly was something that preempted Penn state, right. Is is Penn state followed shortly thereafter, I would say 15 minutes. Uh, but who knows at this point, (laughs) Penn state followed up with a statement from James Franklin, you know, thanking Taylor Stubblefield for his services and for his work and effort over the past three years. But 
uh, acknowledging that he felt like it was time to to move on, to to go in a different direction, and uh, you know, kind of quickly followed the the quote from Franklin with a statement that Penn State would uh, conduct a national search immediately for Sellafield's replacement. So, yep. yeah, I you know, look like. Uh, let's be honest about this. Uh, who's happy about being fired, right? Who's who's happy about right? Being, uh, but sometimes, it, sometimes you get it right. Like sometimes, like uh, it, things didn't work out here. Clearly, there was frustration, um, and maybe a, a, re- a real problem has developed yeah. in a certain position. This is not necessarily that, uh, and no. and I and and it seems like it did not. You, you some guys are like, I understand. Like it seems like Taylor Sebelfield right. is. I do not understand. This is not what I think is is right or whatever you want to say best, whatever. Yeah. No, I think I think look, uh people harp on it, and I hate to go here immediately, but this is just it stands out. Uh you know, the the good to great to elite. Yeah. Post Ohio State. It, like yep. it it is it is the foundation of everything that's happened in Penn State football since then, and really even before then. Uh, but James Franklin's mindset is not to be really good and to be satisfied with yep. 11 and two and a Rose bowl win. I mean, th- these are things that certainly I think the program is touting and feels like our accomplishments and they are, but if you're not constantly seeking ways to improve and ways to, to, you know, enhance what you already bring to the table, then I think, his feeling and really the mentality of the program overall is that you're selling yourself short. You're, 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 yeah. you're not, you're not doing justice to, to, to what everybody else's endeavor is, which is to be yeah. the best right? Yeah. to win national championships. And this is where I think it's um, a little bit unfair because and Lambda uh, here asked a great question, by the way, uh, we're here live nine Oh seven Eastern time. Sunday night. Uh, we're not doing a full podcast today. This is just a quick thing. Nate and I are here talking with you. Please like the video. Um, we got a great crowd tonight, but if you want to ask a question, we can get maybe one or two on. So make sure you, if you want to, you, you give the, the, uh, donation to the channel, always appreciate it. But because we got tight time, uh, Lambda gets on because he asked the question that I was going to ask you next. How much of Stubbs getting fired has to uh, do with not landing Thornton and Prather in the portal? Nate, um, I think this is a jumping off point where it's an obvious place to start, but yeah. this isn't just about the portal. If you look right. back at the places Penn State was in with recruit recruits and, and receivers, Penn State had a great shot at some elite receivers. Uh, Rodney Gallagher is not the only guy on the list that Penn State missed in the last uh, recruiting cycle. And for as much as we did, as Taylor Stubblefield talks about those five receivers in the class of 2022, um, there were other things driving the engine of that being a top five class. So, you know, what is the balance here of development of the players and then the players being brought in? Yeah, I I think certainly it's a combination of the two. I'm, I'm certainly more comfortable talking about the the development side of things, but certainly you can point to, some misses and some some uh, everything is judged in totality right right uh, because m- maybe you miss your first target in uh in the recruiting class but if if you're able to take what you do have and the players who do come in whether that's portal or otherwise in regular uh you know traditional recruiting and then get them to a place where they're highly productive and highly efficient receivers. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I, th- I think that would be uh, a different conversation. It, it, it becomes complicated. And let's be honest about this. John Dotson was inherited, but spent a good amount of time under Taylor Stubblefield. Right. Yep. This is, this is a, a first round 16th overall pick in the NFL draft. That's yeah. not nothing. That's not nothing at all. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty legit. Uh, yeah. And you've seen that from, from Jahan Dotson. Parker Washington announced for the NFL that he's that he's declaring for the NFL. What are we talking? Third, fourth round? Probably? Maybe, maybe fifth? Maybe. Uh, well, no, no, no. I would say I, he is early projections. I've seen second round is the ballpark where he's starting. I think he slips into the third because I don't know that the okay. speed is going to be there for him to be a big bodied slot receiver at five, nine, 215 pounds. Like he's got to have some dimensions there for him to be 
more highly rated in the, in the draft process, which is not about how good you are. It's about how freaky of an athlete are you? And then how good are you at football? Like it is still a little basketball lottery pick sort of thing. Um, so yeah, you, you talk about, uh, Jahan Dotson inherited and then, um, the development of the room. Um, and that's... I, I think we, we saw the, the proof in the pudding where James Franklin started the season talking about we're running two tight ends. We're, we're not going to go three wide. We're not going to do the offense that Mike Yersich and, and what everyone envisioned because we feel comfortable with these guys and maybe not having three receivers on the field. Yeah. I look like let's, let's, uh, you know, cut through the fog a little bit here. Uh, Keandre Lambert Smith was anticipated to be not just a third receiver, but a steady third receiver. And yeah. It didn't happen. Like if you go back and I mean, I, I wrote the story. You can, you can go to the quotes uh, from James Franklin in August talking about his optimism that the room, the depth, right? So not just the top line guys, but everybody behind them would be. So, so you knew Mitchell Tinsley and Parker Washington were going to be one A and B, right? The, yep. uh, these are guys that you can count on, but the dynamic was supposed to change this year. The dynamic was supposed to be such that Keandre Lambert Smith could, could give you heavy contributions. Uh, Omari Evans could give you something. Trey Wallace could give you something. Malik mega could give you something. Uh, Liam Clifford could give you something like on down the line that yep. you would have a competitive atmosphere. You would have a, a room that, you know, perpetuated itself right that it moved itself forward and could give you more options so that when someone takes away so when someone's determined to take away tinsley or washington you have somebody else that you can go to and the bottom line is that that did not happen right like if you look through and now there are reasons for that keandre lambert smith got hurt in the middle of the season yep. uh but if, but if you go on down through the list uh you're really looking at one and two finished with about the same ish um, ballparking here, but about right. the same targets per game, right? Uh, ish per game. Once you count the fact that Parker Washington missed three games after that, it's like half, right? Like Keandre Lambert yeah. Smith is a steep drop off. And yep. then everybody after that is, is an even steeper drop off. So it's just, it was a situation where I think that there is an argument to be made. And I think that t you saw it. Taylor Stubblefield made that argument of, Hey, the development is there. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like there, there are a ton of guys who helped lead to this, but if, if I'm reading between the lines correctly and who knows, I, I could be wrong, but if I'm reading between the lines of what James Franklin is doing and what James Franklin wants from the program and from his receiver position, it's more, it's just, yeah. it's just more. Yeah. Right? And, and, and it didn't happen this year. I wish I could dip into uh, Fitz and, and Snyder's brain right now and just pull out the the misses because it's always – you know the guys that they signed, right? But the misses kind of fall back into the ether unless you're – they they kind of like brand themselves on you. So just the two that are off the top of my head. We talked about Rodney Gallagher. Noel Rogers um, you know, was one of Penn State's top targets. They didn't get very far with him. Committed to Ohio State. Again, that's very tough. But this is the results we're talking about. And then uh, Cam Selden committed to Tennessee again, NIL huge se season, Josh Heupel. That's hard. But at the same time, Penn State was in a great position with him, at least from what we saw early on, he wanted to play receiver and then it kind of petered out. So th these are Taylor Stubblefield and all the things that he said is not wrong, right? It's just, when you look at the totality of places where things need to progress, I think you've made the point clear about the roster. They haven't progressed and, and the receivers the the types of receivers, the um, kind of sameness of what they've been able to recruit has not really borne fruit into the guys that you just mentioned of competing with Ohio State and and progressing and having the talent to develop. So it, in culmination, it you know it makes sense here. I, he was starting to be one of the guys that is brought up on the Blue White Illustrated message board quite a bit in terms of hey, what about this guy? This isn't working, producing results. Should we be concerned about this? And then and here we are. One last thing, uh, and we could go another 20 minutes. Uh, we're only going to go a couple more minutes. Let's circle back let's to Dante not, Cephas. Let's not, Dante yeah. Cephas, Keandre Lambert-Smith, that is the receiving room uh, for Penn State. He is not enrolling right away, correct? So he's committing to Penn State, but he's going back to Kent State. I don't know the specifics there, and I don't know if you have them, but I know that yeah. was the issue before was whether yeah. or not he was going to go back to Kent State. 
Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't want to speak out of turn, but my understanding, again, like a lot of stuff has happened and in between all of that stuff happening, I put my daughter to bed. So, yeah. so I just, I just want to be clear about this. Uh, the understanding before Cephas announcement was that he had, he, he, he doesn't have enough credits to graduate right now, but yes. things become eminently easier for him in terms of transferring credits, counting, so on and so forth if he just graduates right so finish up your course load at kent state in the spring and then he's able to join in may uh for penn state so yeah that that is that is my rough understanding if, if things change i apologize uh you know under, i didn't mean to put you on the live spot. circumstances yeah yeah exactly but. like it was a question that i had pop into my brain and it, it came out of my mouth before. we had about three minutes to talk before we did this show <laughs> so we didn't iron out all of the details so i knew i was going to put you in a bad spot i apologize uh but it is something that we'll have at bluewhiteillustrated.com a great reason you're not getting all of it right here some of the uh some of those details they're going to be over bluewhiteillustrated.com sign up for uh i wanted to say the old deal it's twenty nine ninety nine now. If you didn't sign it's up, getting already, more expensive. Yeah, yeah. So, this is sign up right now. Of, yeah, if you're if it's like uh, flights, right? Like, don't wait. Don't <laughs> the wait. The closer you get, the more expensive it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just want to run through a couple things here from from Dante Cephas before we get going. Um, it, it played a couple of games against uh, Power Five opponents. Best game was against Washington. Six receptions, one hundred and five yards. Didn't do a whole lot against Georgia. Surprise or Oklahoma, but was dominant at his level. Uh, 13 catches, 246 yards against Ohio, followed that up with nine for 120 uh, against Miami of Ohio. A good separator. You know, I still need to do a lot of work on him uh, because I, I, I'm I'm getting to the point where I'm like, I'm going to do the stuff once they commit because uh, I, I had Ty Broden, I had Carter. We done all these guys that uh, didn't end up at Penn State. So Dante Cephas, we'll get a full uh, T Frank's film room breakdown over at bluewhiteillustrated.com. But what I have seen of him, like those other guys, average depth of target according to PFF, 15.4 this year, meaning he can stretch the field, he can get open deep, and he's a playmaker. Um, really good route runner from what I saw early when I thought they were going to get him the first time. And, uh, you know, kind of Jahan Dotson, Mitchell Tinsley route running skills, uh, but with a little more, I think a little more juice than Tinsley, but not quite as big, 6'1", 178. So when all that stuff gets ironed out, bluewhiteillustrated.com, we'll have more uh, coming up. We'll have six shows coming up next week. So uh, this is just a taste. Uh, the one thing to note, the recruiting show is happening tomorrow. So the recruiting show, you'll get some more of the details on the transfer portal and Dante Cephas uh, with the guys tomorrow on Monday. We're switching that around. And then uh, we're doing our live show on Tuesday. So that's coming up this week. Ryan will be with me on both shows. It's going to be Ask Ryan on, on Tuesday night. So bring your recruiting questions. We can talk about all that stuff coming up. Can I can I correct one narrative that I, I don't want to go? Uh, sure. The, the Julian Fleming thing, like, was class of 2012. He was already committed to Ohio State before yeah. Taylor Stubblefield arrived. So I just like yeah. I, I think it's I think it's important. It, you know, it always is. I think it's important to be fair about situations like this, where it's not like Taylor Stubblefield is a failure. <laughs> it's, He's it's not, not the not, reason for all of the problems, <laughs> right? Like, well, and and even in his position group, I mean, I think that there were things. It is it is a balance. It's simply a question of where are they right now, and if you look at where they are as a position group. They are in a state of flux and it is not a, a solid, like you're not banking on, it is the major question going into they're, next season. They're lagging behind. Yeah. I Correct. think that's a fair way to put it. The, the offensive line has surged. Running backs are great. Quarterback has a five-star uh, young promising talent. Uh, hell, I would even say uh, Sean Clifford got better with, with, uh, you know, under Mike Yersich. The defense, I think we've been through all of those positions. So yeah, it, it does seem like, a position group that's lagging behind. All right. I yep. promise we wouldn't go super long. We're getting out of here right now. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, if you're watching this on replay, once again, please like the video, subscribe to blue illustrated.com because we're bringing you uh, fast paced, breaking news all the time. Even when we want to be watching football and uh, kicking up on a Sunday evening, cause this is what we do. We give you Penn state football news whenever it happens. Even if somebody decides to make uh, an info dump Sunday night, we'll be back tomorrow on the BWI daily edition until then. Talk to you later.